If you have old grocery store bags, turn them into a beautiful handbag. Let me show you how to do it. Hi, my name is Julie and welcome to my channel where we talk everything sewing. In today's video, I will show you how I turned old grocery store bags into a beautiful handbag. I challenge myself to use unconventional material for this project and upcycle old grocery store bags because actually they made from a very durable material and this bag will last a long time. I also wanted to spark a little bit of creativity and show you that you can create beautiful items using what you already have at home. This bag is actually quite easy to make and I will show you exactly how to do it. In this project I will be using Medler Cerocycle thread which is made from 100% recycled PET bottles making it ideal for refashion projects. So now let's start our tutorial. So I start by washing the bags in the washing machine, drying them and pressing them. Now we have to be cautious in this step and press on low heat because it's made from plastic and if you use high heat on your iron you will simply melt and burn the plastic. So I use like two stars out of the three on the heat setting. So once the bags are washed it's time to overlook what materials we will be using in this project. So in this project I will be using four grocery store bags already washed and pressed. I will also add a bit of faux leather. I bought this for like four euros but actually I made a mistake here. I ordered it online and when it arrived I noticed that it's way thicker than I expected it to be and uh, throughout the project I really struggle with the fact that it's really thick and a few places you will see I wasn't able to sew a very nice seam uh, because it simply was too thick. So I would advise you if you will be using leather for an extra touch, choose a little bit of a thinner faux leather. Also we will need a fusible interfacing. I use the heavy duty one, the thicker one, because we want to add more structure to the handbag. Also I will add the strap to my handbag so I use this hardware that I also bought for like one euro each. To sew the handbag I will be using Metler Cerocycle thread. This thread is made from 100% recycled PET bottles and it can be used on a variety of different materials. Also I will need a thicker thread to sew leather so I will be using Metler extra strong thread. Now that we have our materials ready it's time to create the pattern. The pattern is very easy to make. You can use the drawing that you see on the screen and I simply used five centimeters with straps and created a 45 degree angled weave. I also marked a few colored lines which will show me uh, where I will put the contrasting blue and leather straps. I created the bottom of the bag which is the rectangular with the rounded corners. The parameter of the rectangular has to be twice the length of the bottom of your main pattern detail. We will also cut a few more details from the leather and lining later on and I will show you when we need them exactly what measurements I will be using. So first I will harvest the bags to get my straps and later on I will cut the bottom and later on I will also cut the lining from the same bags. You really need to be strategic here and to be careful how you place these straps just to make sure that you're not putting it on some printed part of the bag. For your own reference I used five centimeter width straps with two centimeters added extra for seam allowance and there are 35 centimeters in length. I used about 14 of these straps in the final bag and I used three blue straps and two leather straps. I also put fusible interfacing on all these straps just to give more shape and form. So now that you have your straps ready and cut from fabric and interface it's time to start sewing them. So at the sewing machine I will be threading my machine today with Metler Cerocycle thread. This thread is made from 100% recycled recycled PET bottles making it ideal for repassion and sustainable sewing projects. Just like all-purpose polyester thread, the Cerocycle thread can be used in a variety of different fabrics and to sew with a variety of different stitches. The very surprising thing is that when you're sewing with the Cerocycle thread it sews so smoothly just like a regular thread and you will even forget that it's actually made from bottles. Cerocycle comes in a variety of different colors and you can choose 
which one fits your particular project best. So now that I threaded the machine with the metal cycle thread, I will sew these straps. And to sew the straps, I will simply fold the seam allowance to the inside of the strap and sew along the edge one millimeter from the edge. And I sew both long edges of the strap. I will continue doing this with all beige color straps. Now for the blue straps, they already have finished edges. I don't have to fold them. So I put both of these straps sides together and put fusible interfacing to kind of join them. Now I will make two seams at the sides just to secure the strap with the interfacing. Again, I'm using metal or cycle thread to do this task. Once we finish the fabric straps, we need to do the leather strap as well. And for this task, we need to make a few changes on our sewing machine. So first, because we will be sewing leather, faux leather, I'm switching to the leather needle. Also, because leather is thick material and we will be using higher size needle, I'm using for your own reference, I'm using size 100 needle. You also need to pair it with a heavy duty thread. So today I'm threading my machine with Metler Extra Strong Thread. This thread is way thicker than the standard all-purpose polyester thread and it's also much much stronger and it's tear proof. Because of how heavy duty it is, it is perfect for sewing very thick materials like leather, denim or canvas. Metler Extra Strong comes in a variety of different colors and you can choose which one you want to use. Sometimes I use the similar color and sometimes like if I'm sewing denim I like to use a contrasting color. One more thing you want to pay attention we will be using a higher size needle than the standard and also we'll be using thicker thread. So you want to make a few test stitches and to see how the seam is turning out and if you need to adjust the tension to get the best seam quality. So for the leather straps I will do exactly the same as I did with the beige straps. I will simply fold the seam allowance to the inside and sew one millimeter from the edge. Since we have our machine threaded with the extra strong thread and also we have leather needle installed, we will do other leather details as well. So now I will do the straps. For the straps I cut a rectangular of 30 centimeters. However, I did end up later trimming it down significantly. So you have to use the length of the handles that you're comfortable with. And for the width I used 10 centimeters plus 2 centimeters for seam allowance. So to sew the handle I fold the inside of the seam to the inside of the strap, fold the handle in half and sew one millimeter from the edge and then I will sew from another side again one millimeter from the edge. Now I will fold my handle in half and I will mark five centimeters from the center in both sides. This way I will get a better holding shape for my handbag and I will sew that marked place like this. So your handle now looks like this. Also we will now do the strap. For the strap I cut six centimeter width and 115 centimeter length strap. Same as we did with the handle, I simply turn the seam allowance to the inside, fold, so at one edge and then at the other edge. Now I will also add the hooks at the both ends of the strap and I will do it like this. To reduce seam bulk I will cut off a bit of the fabric right here. I will slip in the hook, fold the fabric and make a few short stitches over here to securing it in place and I will repeat the same with another end of the strap. Now that we have these details ready we can start weaving the back. So I put my weaving pattern at the bottom and I will put Put my straps on top. So I start by laying all straps at one direction and later I will be adding across them another strap. So I start by laying all of my straps at one direction and later I will be putting another strap on them at the 45 degree angle and start weaving. Here the important part is to remember that the strap at one step goes on top of another strap, in next step it goes under another strap, in next step again it goes on top of another strap, again at the bottom, again on the top. And you continue doing this all the way through the pattern detail. I'm also securing with the pin so that my weave does not fall apart and I will do the same with the second part of my handbag. Now I will bring it to the sewing machine and I will secure that weave in several places with a different stitch. You don't have to stitch every single line here, I just make sure that I stitch 
each strap at least once and secure it in place like this. So once you have this ready, I want you to bring it back to your pattern detail. So at the top, you will be folding the strap and creating that top part. Once you fold the strap, secure it with the pin. Also, draw the pattern detail around and leave one centimeter for seam allowance at the side and at the bottom and trim excess seam allowance. Now you want to cut exactly the same fabric detail from your lining and at the lining top, add one centimeter seam allowance. If you want, you can add a pocket to your lining at this step. Now we will do the lining. So first clip in each corner of the lining. At the top, fold seam allowance to the inside and sew one millimeter from the edge and do this all at the top. Repeat with the second piece of your lining. Now I want you to take the main detail and you will pin it together with the lining at the top, wrong sides together. You will also place the handle at this part. Once you have it pinned, sew all around the top one millimeter from the edge and this way we will be bonding the main fabric with our lining and strap. Once you sew around the edge and attach the handles, I want you to sew at the seam allowance line, bonding the main fabric with the lining. So we will now join both sides of our bag. Put them wrong sides together, pin at the sides and sew with a straight seam. Now take one seam, unfold it and sew from each side of the seam, securing it in the open position because pressing open won't simply work in this step. Now I want you to cut the leather piece a bit longer than the edge of your bag and width should be about five centimeters. Fold one centimeter of each strap side to the inside of the strap like this. Also, at this step, I did a very small loop and I will attach it to the end of that leather strap. This is where I will hang my back strap because I simply did not have matching hardware. Otherwise, I would be using like a metal hook. So once this is done, I want you to take that leather strap, put it on the seam and fully covering it and sew at the edge of the strap. Once you will be approaching the top, a few centimeters before you reach the top, I want you to fold that part with the loop to the inside of the back. Continue to sew until the end, pull the needle down, rotate the fabric, make a few stitches, pull the needle down again, rotate and continue sewing down. So this is where it actually was very, very thick to sew and you can see that I did not sew perfectly straight seams. So this was really my mistake because I used simply too thick of a leather and it was too difficult to handle. Yeah, so be careful not to pick a too thick leather for this project and repeat the same with another side. Now the final step is to include the bottom of the bag. To do that take the leather bottom put fusible interfacing on it and on top place the detail for the lining cut from the grocery store bag and sew around the seam allowance line bonding these all layers together. Now with your bag inside out, pin the bottom in place. And so all around the bottom using straight stitch, it will be particularly hard at those rounded corners. So now the last step, trim a seam allowance in half and take long strap from the same grocery store bag and put it on the raw edge of the seam completely covering it and sew all around the bottom. And this is finally when our bag is done. And this is the final result we get. This is really a beautiful bag. I wish I chose the leather a bit better, uh, but otherwise I really like how it turned out. And yeah, it can be made from any kind of material, not only grocery store bags. So get creative with this project. Thank you for watching today's video and I will see you next time. Bye.